Listen to our scripture lesson. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We have played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say look a glutton, a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There are times when the words of Jesus fit the moment. My guess is that every generation has this same frustration as preachers and churches share the work of the gospel message. There are moments in church work when it feels like we just cannot win. Some church members cannot believe we aren't doing this or saying more about that. And others, at the very same time, at the very same moment, are thinking we are doing too much of that and saying too much about that. Even Jesus could not please all the people all the time. I guess we should allow space for us as church, as leaders, for that to sink in and realize that we cannot put that pressure on ourselves either, to try to please everyone all the time. Rather than worrying about pleasing everyone, we must stay focused on the mission. We focus on unconditional love and forgiveness and hope, on peace and compassion and empathy, core messages of the gospel. Pleasing everyone is a losing quest God calls us to be faithful and stay connected to God and then take our gifts and match them with the unmet needs in our community and then God fills the gap. Focusing on the main thing is the mission of the church. About 20 years ago, I heard a guest preacher who had also been a farmer and he preached this very passage. It will come as no surprise that I am not and never have been a farmer. I am not even certain how many generations you would have to go back in my family in order to hit farmers. But this preacher farmer told me each yoke was custom fit for the animal that was to use it. They needed it to fit comfortably for the animal to be willing to do the work. It was insight which allowed me to hear the passage differently. There are a number of different implications that come to us who are yoked. First, we realize that someone else is in control and there must be a matter of trust, which is important for the work. We are yoked to do something. We are yoked together. All these together remind us that we are yoked so that we can do our part of God's work together. We are yoked so that we can do our part of God's work together. We are not alone. We are not in control. God has a plan. Listen and trust. There are times when we feel the weight of the world, the pressure mounts and the burdens we carry are great. So this 
passage gives us great comfort. But this week, I want to focus on a word which is not present in the English translation we just used. It is a very important part of the gospel message and central to our Christian life. It is one of the fruits of the Spirit. The Hebrew scriptures use the word hesed, which means loving kindness. Loving kindness that will not let you go. The Greek word for kindness is krestos, which is one letter different than the word for Christ, Messiah, Christos. This is the word for kindness which is found in Galatians 5.22 as one of the gifts of the Spirit. When you see kindness, you know that the Spirit is at work. It's a leftover, a residue, a gift of the Spirit. This is the amazing, exciting, and wonderful part. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, we read these soul-soothing words of Jesus. Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy. That's the English translation. But the Greek word is krestos, kind, good, benevolent, pleasant, kindness. My yoke is kindness. Isn't that mind-blowingly wonderful? This beautiful play on two words that look and sound very much alike suggests that we are yoked to Christ in kindness. As he is kind, we are called to be kind. It's beautiful. So, let's be kind too. Right now in our world, in our country, in our church, this speaks of a different way of being. We are in the middle of very complex and difficult issues facing our church and our country, and we are starving for kindness. We can and we will have different, very different opinions of lots of things, and we should. But please, let's ex express them in kindness. Imagine how much better our church will be if and when we do. We might come to appreciate another and another's point of view, and we might just model for a polarized, harsh, unkind world a different way of relating. And right now, the world isn't seeing that from the church, which is why the fastest growing religious group are nuns, no religious affiliation. Can you blame them? Those are reasons enough for doing it, but there's also this compelling reason. Kindness. It's what Jesus asks us to do. My yoke is kindness. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, allow your spirit to leave a residue in our life.